So as we said, the uh, different assemblies, the wall assemblies, the floor assemblies, the roof assemblies, all of those things really are sort of key in this sort of understanding of what's driving the design because they are the kind of uh, the thing in between a design idea and the sort of detailing and, and final version. So really thinking about how all those different pieces mesh together is going to be really important and it's sort of part of that main uh, design driver process. So you could imagine pretty easily sort of imagining to say, all right, if we're talking about wall assemblies and we're talking about floor assemblies and maybe even the roof assemblies, the ceiling possibly, that we could go through and sort of look at each of these different issues and be able to sort of map out at this stage of the project, what are the important elements? And we can start to jot those down, make notes, Find, make sure that those notes are finding their way into the planning process uh, and sort of uh, define kind of what we mean by the wall assembly in that location. Uh, you know, what's, the, what's important at this point? What do we need to think about later when we start doing the detailing? All of that. Uh, but we can also just sort of obviously and quickly say which are the biggest design drivers. Uh, so, for example, uh, the walls, um, obviously fire safety is going to be a big issue when you start thinking about the wall assemblies because that's one of the main things we're doing at the planning phase is we're figuring out how all the separations work so that we know that you know one area is going to be enclosed in a bunch of two-hour walls and another area is going to be enclosed in a bunch of one-hour walls and uh, I've got some stairwells and I've got some corridors and I've got these other things like that's one of the key ideas of planning because I need to know that stuff in order to really be able to understand well, can I have somebody on one side of that wall easily walk through to the other side? Or do they have to go through a, a closed door system? Can I have windows between those? Can I uh, create a sense of openness? Or do they have to all be separated in that sort of truer sense? So understanding the fire safety kind of compared to these things is really a kind of key understanding. So that would be something that we would want to make sure, especially at this point, uh, kind of what we mean by the, the wall assemblies. And same thing we could say with the floor and the ceiling assemblies, uh, that you would sort of be kind of thinking about those from a fire safety separation standpoint probably first. Uh, and then kind of making sure that uh, whatever it is we're talking about matches into the structure and that you know, the ideas of sort of the general aesthetic nature of the attempt that we're trying here, like what we mean by this building. So we're trying to fit that in. But then you could start saying, uh, as we were talking about earlier, all right, the acoustics. Well, from a ceiling standpoint, uh, you know, the acoustics are going to be huge, right? That's going to be a very important element. And obviously uh, the thermal and moisture protection for the exterior walls is going to be enormous, but also for the roof system, it's going to be an enormous part of that sort of decision making. So you start to focus in on where the important issues are and that tells you what issues that you're going to need to uh, make sure uh, not only get detailed later, but also find their way into the specifications, have clear uh, descriptions in the design development drawings so that the people who are doing the pricing can understand the scale and scope of what they're getting into. Uh, so you're using this kind of uh, matrix, doesn't have to be a matrix, can be a memo list, uh, sketch drawings, whatever, but you're using some system, you're trying to systematize the idea that you're going through all of these different types of issues and you're figuring out which ones are important at which point uh, and in which portion of a, a section of a building. So just a real quick example, imagine for a moment that we've got a space that's like a big reception area. And it's got you know, doorways that come in and there's a, let's say, concrete floor up above with some concrete beams beyond. And there's a reception desk. There's somebody sitting at the reception desk. And so we get as much height out of that space as we can. So we're trying to get a lot of height and this is about people feeling sort of excited and interested to be coming into this space. And so we're, we're trying to encourage that interest and excitement. But then maybe directly next door, just a little bit over, I have a whole drop ceiling system. I 
I still have the same structural system, but over here, I'm blocking off all the ductwork, I'm putting in all of the sprinkler heads, I'm making this space better for people who are talking. Uh, I'm making it so that the acoustics work better. Do I really care that the acoustics are a little too live and bouncy in this uh, reception space? No, I don't really care that much, right? That's not really going to be a design driver for that space. What's going to be the design driver is, is it exciting? Does it uh, have clear wayfinding? Uh, you know, what's the, what's the feel? What's the aesthetic going to be? Because that's that sort of front face that we're trying to go with. So maybe on this one, we're doing like an industrial look and maybe we have a round spiral duct instead of the uh, rectangle ducts or something along those lines, right? We're sort of playing with uh, the different uh, utilities and the different structural systems and all the different parts, the wall assemblies and the floor assemblies. We're expressing them, we're doing some, we're letting the acoustics bounce around. But then in the place where people have to actually get their work done, right, we're really focused on cost control, we're focused on acoustics, we're focused on uh, uh, making sure we meet the fire safety issues. We also want to make sure we can maintain it simply. So, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of money in maintenance in the back office spaces. I probably don't mind if I have to spend a little extra money uh, for maintaining the light fixtures or keeping the space clean or something for that reception area because, you know, it's this sort of special front door aspect of it. I spend a little more per square foot on the maintenance, not that big a deal. But for the whole office area to spend a little bit more on the maintenance adds up to a lot of money. So uh, each of these different spaces, I might start to have different versions of what is the key important element uh, in that design, in that moment of design. So, okay, we've got the reception area, uh, you know, maybe we've also got, and then the office areas, maybe we've also got like a cafeteria area or a multi-use area or a conference room or like each of those would be different than the two that we've already started with and so you'd be going through uh, and kind of detailing out listing out uh, yes you know in uh, wall types uh, one this is you know very important but maybe wall type two yeah it's a it's less important it's maybe it's just a plus on that one like you're figuring out a system for how you control that kind of information because that's the point at the planning stage we're at the end of schematic design going into design development that's what we're trying to hold on to is what are those ideas and how do they impact the design planning later we'll talk about how the uh, details do that but right now what are the big issues and how do they impact our planning process?